Hey, it's Eric with Jazz Wealth Managers, where we don't just invest the dough. We like to educate you on your dough. So let's talk a little bit about rolling over an old 401k to an IRA. Now, it sounds pretty simple, and, and generally it is. I've just seen quite a few different mistakes there and things that I want to share with you to make sure that you're doing the right thing, because this is something that we work with with clients on a daily basis. So the way it works in general, if you've separated from employment, you can roll over your 401k, or if you're over 59 and a half, you can roll over a 401k, or sometimes some plans just happen to let you do it. I see that it's uh, very rare, but every plan has different rules. But ultimately, when you leave the job, you can do it for sure, or if you're over 59 and a half, you can do it. And so with those, what you're going to do is the first thing is you have to set up an account at, at somewhere else, at a different custodian. So let's just say that you're 401k is held at Fidelity and you want to go over to, I don't know, maybe Jazz Wealth, the Goldman Sachs. And so you create the account and you create a traditional IRA. Now, if you have a Roth IRA, you want to be very careful with this because if you only have a traditional IRA open and they don't label the checks correctly or you don't label them correctly, you send two checks to the traditional IRA, it could end up all going there. So make sure that you have a traditional and a Roth if you have the Roth also. So the way this is going to work is oftentimes you're just going to contact the employer plan and you're going to ask them, hey, you know, I wanna roll this over. Now, sometimes they're gonna give you a little grief depending on who they are, what company it is. Oftentimes they're gonna be really nice about it and just take care of it. Sometimes they don't wanna lose the business and they make it a little more difficult, uh, believe it or not. But in the way this is gonna work though is they're gonna send you either some paperwork and it's gonna be a little confusing, but don't let anybody charge you anything for this. If you need help with something like that, we're here to help, but sh nobody should be charging you just to fill out the paperwork to make sure that you get this right. Another way that they'll do it is they're just going to request the account information for you. So from wherever you would set up your account, let's just say you set it up at Goldman Sachs and your account number, you need to have all of that information. You're going to give that to them and they're going to be able to help you get that rolled over. Another way that they do it, and this is one that we really, it's pretty common that we see. They're actually going to cut a check and the check is going to be mailed out sometimes to you, sometimes to the custodian that you are sending the money to. Be very careful with this one though. This is one of the biggest mistakes that we see. If they make the check directly to you, it's called an indirect rollover. And what is going to happen is they are going to withhold taxes on that. Then if you don't want to have any kind of tax liability and all of this show is income, then what is going to happen is you're going to have to take this check mail it to the custodian and also you're going to have to add in all the taxes they withheld so you're going to be on the hook for a lot of money that has to go back in if you don't have that you're going to be in a bad spot so make sure that you're careful with that that you're not doing the indirect rollover instead what they're generally going to do is they're going to cut the check and it's going to say the name of the custodian let's say goldman sachs and then it's going to say fbo your name on there so john smith whatever the case is when you get that check, or if you get it, if they don't mail it directly to the custodian, write the account number that that check goes to. That's just another step in the process to make sure that they're going to get that in the right account for you. So those are a few different ways that this works. It's a pretty simple process. Like I say, sometimes people want to make it out to be more confusing. It generally isn't. Just be careful that you're not going to do the indirect rollover and mess that one up. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch more FinTips videos, click here. Be sure to like and subscribe also.